so bored. I haven't had anything to do all week. And no school visits, nothing. I could write, but uh, that's hard. And so uh, I was just thinking that would be cool to show people, uh, fans of the series, the actual places from the books. Because, you know, a lot of people say these places don't exist. And um, when I say a lot of people, I mean basically nobody. It just sounds good. But they do exist, and I'm going to take you there today. I'm going to show you all these places in the books that are not going to look nothing like you think they do because they're run-down old buildings. They're all just, uh, everything is different than what you imagine in your head. But I'm going to show you the real places anyway, uh, even if it is a big disappointment. And maybe I'll even find some of the uh, animals. I doubt it. I think they're uh, they're all dead. <laughs> so we're going to some secret places, so secret that I'm gonna have to blindfold myself. Let's go. where this is at because it's a secret and quite frankly the owners of the property are crazy okay we're at my parents house where I grew up at and uh, this is where I pictured the whole uh, setting of the kingdom at the end of the driveway so out in front we've got a long driveway with a pond right next to it I used to walk down this driveway every day during school as a kid and the school bus would pick me up just like it picks up Benjamin in the story and uh, there's the pond it's not very high usually the pond should be filled up but we haven't had much rain the last couple years and so uh, after a recent rain it filled up a little bit <laughs> But uh, the pond looked different when I was a kid. And um, here's what happened. Maybe it was third or fourth grade. This is crazy. But this is kind of how everything started for me. One morning, I was going out to the school bus. And um, I was going to wait for it. And then I heard this, this noise uh, right at the edge of the water. And there weren't any weeds um, like there are now so you could see all the way down to the water and I heard this hissing noise and I looked down and there was this snake and um, there was a catfish in its mouth but the catfish was like sideways it was sideways in its mouth and it was so freaky to see and uh, I, I just couldn't believe it I'd never seen anything like it because it was a big catfish the snake wasn't as big as the catfish but uh, the snake saw me and um, it slithered back into the water and, and and I never forgot that and I ended up actually putting that scene in the brave journey um, right as Benjamin is going to the end of his driveway so here is the end of the driveway and so when I say the kingdom at the end of the driveway this is the end of the driveway that I'm talking about There's trees on the other side, just a big tree line down the road. There's the uh, paper box. Benjamin always goes to get the paper in the book. There's a hedge apple, one of these green things that fall from the hedge trees around this time of year, in the fall time, a whole bunch of them. And um, as he kicks the hedge apple, he hears some sticks pop up. And uh, as he's wearing Pugsley's collar, he sees a hole open up in the fox den. And here it is. Whoa, if I don't fall. Hello. So this is the fox den. It's, at least that's what I used to call it. It's a big pile of sticks. Just a pile of stacked up tree branches and everything this is what it looks like you can see how big it is right here 
And uh, I always thought it'd be cool if animals were inside, but they never were. When I was a kid, I was always looking for something inside. Um, there are thorns on those sticks, so I didn't look very long. But uh, this is it. This is the fox den. It's the doorway to the kingdom underneath. And there is no cave underneath this fox den, but in the story, um, this is where it leads to. So this is what it looks like from the fox den. In the book, Al the bus driver is always coming down the road. And then he always disappears, his, his school bus always disappears around the corner. All right, just a little bit further down the road right here. When Benjamin has to start his journey to find Ferengus' barn and Paco and Clementine and Roscoe are joining him. Uh, they've got to get through the trees and go through a pasture. This pasture right here, it doesn't look like much because there's a whole bunch of evergreen trees. But uh, at one point there were some wild goats that lived out here. The reason why is because there was a man named Bud Pursley who lived on this property. He had a house and he lived with his mom, Old Widow Moore. And they're both gone now, but uh, Widow Moore and Bud Pursley are in the books. They're in uh, the Traveling Carnival. And this was their property. And uh, it's a big pasture. Bud had some goats and then he, um, he left the property and these goats actually turned into a big herd of wild goats. They would just roam around the pasture. And that's where I got my idea for Zebulon and his clan of wild goats. So there is the pasture right there that Benjamin and all the animals always has to travel through um, to get to a place called Pursley's Woods. After Pugsley died in real life, um, he was run over by a car. I think he was actually set up by uh, the other dog, Princess. She was a very jealous pug. And uh, I think she had him killed off on purpose so she could be the only dog left in the house. <laughs> because she was ignored. Pugsley was our family dog. But, whoa, hey, there's a tree right there. In the book, Pugsley is buried behind the tool shop. And basically, it's right in here. There's a bunch of weeds and just kind of scrap in the back of the tool shop right here. But my Pugsley, he was probably buried right in here. <laughs> There's a scene in The Brave Journey when Benjamin and Paco are talking in front of the pond right on this hill right here. And it's just a nighttime scene when they're just talking about Pugsley. And so this was actually the, the location. And you can see how close it looks in the book. It's kind of a heartwarming scene. It's just... Uh, it's too bad Paco ends up blowing himself up. So now I've got to do some walking and I'm already out of breath. But uh, we're going to go down this road. And uh, this whole area, it's kind of crazy. My wife says she saw a monkey. She's seen it twice now. But apparently, there's this monkey on the loose across the road. Who knows where? And I so badly want to see this thing. Hey, yay, yay.